friends welcome back to the channel this is dr aman on a warm sunday afternoon in the uk and today i'll be talking about the medical training initiative program for the anesthetics yes the people in demand the people who have soared through the covid rain and now what's the opportunity for anesthetists throughout the world to get to the uk training program through the mti so if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe it gives a lot of motivation you know to take some time out of the busy schedule and make something useful for you all so you keep dreamers on youtube please and the disclaimer that i do not represent the gmc i do not represent the nhs nor the royal college of anesthetists nor the any royal colleges uh, the videos that i'm making here is just solely based on the information available online on the databases through the internet portals and through various experiences of people who are already doing these programs uh, so if you are an uh, anesthetist looking to come to the uk and want more information uh, there is a email id which you can directly mail the royal college of anesthetists or you can call their helpline number which is on your screens okay so let's start from the beginning uh, what is mti or the medical training initiative so it is a government scheme uh, designed to assist the doctors from the lower income uh, countries uh, and to bring them into the uk uh, give them an insight of how the uk system works give them them uh, experience in the nhs uh, up to 24 months and then they can go back to the countries so what are the benefits that one gains coming through the MTI to the UK? You get to work for the NHS, which is, you know, among the best working systems in the world. This is a, a you know, structured program by all the Royal Colleges. So it's not like a random post that you're taking and no one is going to take care of you or there won't be any supervisors. Yes, it is a properly structured program where you'll have educational supervisors, clinical supervisors, and you know, this is for further progressing and developing people like uh, from like us who are from the developing nations and who are looking you know to add something onto their curriculums or like you know becoming better clinicians and the first last and foremost like most important i would say is that you uh, get a gmc registration yes uh, you don't appear plab you do not give the royal college membership exams entirely the complete set of the membership exams whatever you have you can still get the general medical council registration what are the other benefits so you get a tier 5 visa to come to the uk yes that's great and you get to become the member of the royal college of the anesthetist which is a 12 month membership uh, uh, which is being sponsored by the royal college itself uh, you get various you know online databases and access uh, you get eligible to write the frca or the other exams of the anesthetics uh, you gain technical and non-technical supports which you can go back and you know implement in the countries and you can take a leadership roles when you return to your home country this yes because uh, uh, working in a western system like the uk does give you a lot of advantage if you want to go back to your home countries so the royal college of anesthetics have a very very simple performa if you have all the yes you can come to the uk if you have a single no you can't come to the uk so let's go through it so if you plan to come to the uk the maximum duration for you has to be 24 months because if you're planning to stay more than 24 months mti scheme is not for you okay you're currently practicing anesthesia in one of the as i said non-rich countries or the low lower middle or upper middle income countries as per the classification of the world bank uh, you do have a postgraduate qualification in anesthesia or intensive care medicine uh, what do they mean by a postgraduate qualification here is at least you should have a two years program two to three to you know and numbers uh, depending on the countries but at least a two-year program which is being you know recognized by the medical councils or the university or the boards in various nations so it has to be a minimum two years program and uh, you have to be in the continuous practice for 12 months this is a basic rule for any sponsorship scheme that uh, you know i've talked about earlier as well so uh, if you are not continuously working for the past 12 months 
bye bye the scheme does not work for you uh, you must have the english competency uh, skills like uh, if either you have a ielts score or a o8 score with the minimum required like uh, as i said earlier uh, if you want ielts as your english exam you have to have 7 in all the stations that is the reading listening writing and speaking and a overall of 7.5 the same with o it becomes b you at least you at least need to have the b uh, grades in every one okay and as i said if you among these five points if there is a single no from you are in the royal college of anesthesia will not welcome you here so you'll have to have all five vss so now it's a little tricky okay because you know you are here to please multiple bodies you you were able to please the royal college of anesthesia bingo great but now there is another giant standing in front of you and that's the gmc okay so for you to be able to apply for the gmc first of all your basic medical qualification or the primary medical qualification should be uh, you know recognized or be acceptable to the gmc in short if you're going to apply for the epic verification or the ecfmg uh, verification your college should be on the list if it's not on the list it should still be you know getting the documentations required because at times the newer colleges or the ones who have recently been granted a recognition or something may not be reflecting on the websites but you need to call them have a talk with them if they say no sorry game over uh as i said you must have a acceptable format for the internship it's usually 3 month surgery 3 months medicine most people get confused with the medicine and surgery like so any surgical branch is you know calculated in the, under the surgical only like if you have ophthal for 15 days ent for 15 days a general surgery for a month if you combine these there's still 2 months and then you have orthopedics and so on so on okay uh you must be able to give uh, a proof that you've been current uh, you know continuously employed for the past 12 months along with the past 5 years 3 years should be exclusively in the anesthetic field uh you must be able to give the good standing certificates which of course is not that hard uh, and then you must always have the english requirement test and the most important uh, most of my friends do have a confusion on this see if you have failed any plab any time sorry mti will not welcome you yeah there is a quite some disparency like uh, what if i have cleared my plab didn't fail just on one attempt i clear my plab will i be able to apply for mti see some colleges say yes some colleges say no as i said it's a gray zone uh, so i don't have much insight on this but if you have unfortunately not cleared the plab one any time MTI is not for you. So, all Royal Colleges usually have some fee associated for you to be granted the sponsorship for the registrations and the visas. So, uh, the fees involved for the GMC sponsorship by the Royal Colleges is very very simple. So, initially you pay hundred pounds to the Royal College of Anesthetists as an initial administrative fee. Then you have to give. around 300 pounds for like 100 pounds or absolutely zero depending on the countries that you belong to so uh, uh, as i said earlier so india bangladesh pakistan most of the southeast asian countries fall under the group of 300 so yes you'll have to shell out that much okay so this becomes very very complex now that why am i showing you these so there in short if you apply for any mti there are two pathways pathway a is you directly apply to the royal college and you know they will charge you some fee they can conduct some interviews and you know make things sorted but most of the times you will not find those post very easy then you go into the what to say alternative pathway so so there are various trust that would directly offer you a sponsorship so uh, this uh, information is clearly available on the gmc uh, website if you simply google gmc sponsorship uh, you will come to know like there's a long list and i've just taken out the ones uh, who will offer you uh, sponsorship in anesthesia or intensive care critical care 
So you can see the big names: Aldehe International Fellowship Scheme, Cambridge University Hospitals, Edge Hill uh, University with the WWL. So this has a fee of thirty-five thousand, as I had said in my earlier presentations as well. Uh, then you have guys in St. Thomas, Harefield, and you know the list goes. As I said, there's a long, long, long list. So how does this become tricky to us? Tricky because most of these, uh, you know, trust. If you go directly surf their website and you think there would be a very, very bold icon saying, "Hey, apply for the fellowship." No, that does not happen. Uh, apparently, if you would surf their websites, very, very few websites would have the exact information of the courses or anything. So what do we do in that case is whenever you're going through these websites, you would always have a contact detail. See, uh, the best way uh, I would say to communicate in the UK is to write mails. Yeah, you may call them; they may not be here because, as I said, because of the pandemic and everything, uh, they're mostly working from home. They're just coming one to two days a week to the offices and everything. But if you write them a mail, yes, they can reply the mails from their homes as well. So rather, you know, the most preferred communication should be writing a mail to any one of these like i've mentioned in the websites so to summarize about the mti scheme for the anesthetics you have to apply for an mti post after you fulfill the criteria criteria as well shown to you the five points if any no you go home if you have all the five yeses okay you are eligible so now you'll have to apply you have to search see uh, if you uh, take the various nhs jobs websites you can search these as uh, clinical fellow posts or international clinical fellow international fellow junior clinical fellow senior clinical fellow depends but the main attracting uh, word here is a clinical fellow so if you're looking for a clinical fellow post you must they would always ask you for a gmc registration yeah but then you have to ask them can you convert this post into a mti post two broad possibilities yes bingo good luck no try again there's no harm in trying again yeah so once uh, you have been you know get you, if you've got a mti post and you've been appointed to that mti post for an interview or something you have to pay the fee the initial administrative fee of 100 pounds as i said once that has been granted then you apply uh, you pay the gmc fee separately but there is a gmc sponsorship fee which with the which goes to the royal college which was around 300 pounds uh, plus the gmc fees is around 400 pounds per year and then once you've been granted your gmc then you go and apply for the tfi visa apply like pay the tfi fees you know apply for the international health surcharge which is being refunded now for tfi as well and then welcome to the uk so my dear friends as i said earlier i'm not anyone representing the royal college the nhs or anyone i'm just here to help uh, like i'm not not even from anesthesia background i'm from any background so just helping all of the medical graduates from all over the globe to come to the uk have a taste of the nhs and see how things work on the other side so if you have not subscribed to the channel i again request please subscribe to our channel uk dreamers on youtube if you have any queries you can mail me at ukdrvlogs at gmail.com i'll try to address them in the best way i can so till then take care keep working hard and this too shall pass thank you so much guys cheers bye